know what really makes us mad? Is wasting money on CDs with only one or two good songs. Yeah. Tell them about punk. What's up, posers? Welcome to Punk Lotto Pod. I'm your co-host, Justin Hensley. Uh, it's just me today, because uh, we're doing something a little special. So, apologies for no new episode last week, and uh, because I got COVID, and uh, it kind of sucks. And <laughs> Welcome to 2023. So, no regular episode this week, but we're going to kick off our Best of 2022 audio with a couple guest list is what I like to call them, appearances here by a couple friends on the show. So uh, what we're doing is today we're going to talk to good friend Corey and our other good friend Dave Brown, Oklahoma Lefty, one band, five songs. And uh, I talked to each of them, and they each told me their favorite albums of 2022. There's some good stuff here. I planned on doing more of these, but I don't don't know if those are going to wind up happening. I would have to record them all this week and then post them next week, but we'll see. We'll see. Dylan and I will be recording our best of 2022 audio, and that will come up next week, I believe. Yeah, I think that's everything. Um, if you if you're curious for some more Patreon content, if you head over to our Patreon, it's Patreon.com/slash Punk Lotto Pod. Uh, I did a series called 2022 A to Z, where I went through every artist I listened to from who released an album in 2022 alphabetically. That's uh, 22 pieces of audio because I didn't have uh, some artists fall under some letters. There's no there's no bands that started with a U that I listened to this year, you know, or a Z. But um, I'm wrapping that series up this week as well. And if you head over to Patreon, it's patreon.com slash punklotopod. One dollar, you get access to all of that bonus audio. Uh, next week, we'll probably do a chart dive, me and Dylan, for our regular bonus audio and... Uh, Thinking about doing a new release audio, but I might actually hold off until next week to do that since uh, I've still got to wrap up the 2022 A to Z this week. So plenty of extra content over there for one buck. But uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. It'll be just me and Dylan, and we'll talk about our picks for the albums of the year. And uh, up first, uh, we'll talk to, I think we'll talk to good friend Corey first, and then we'll have Dave Brown. So thank you, everyone, and we will see you next week. So we are joined here today by our good friend Corey to talk about his best albums of 2022. Welcome back, Corey. Hi, Justin. This is a yearly tradition. Now we get a couple couple of friends of the show back on to talk about uh, the albums that they enjoyed over the year. And uh, let's see, this is probably the third year we've done this. Yeah, that sounds right. I think I've. I don't know. This is three or four. Yeah. Know, at I, least at least three. Yeah. I think this is the third one. Yeah, but you can uh, go, go back and listen to the others. Yeah. yeah, I have impeccable taste. They're all fun episodes to do for sure, and I like getting I like getting the different take on music because Dylan and I are very similar in the style of music we like and the, the artists we like. So I always want to get outside perspectives on stuff that everyone else liked. I was trying to imagine this morning what Dylan's top albums of the year are, and <laughs> I just. <laughs> can't really picture him listening to new music i'm sure he does <laughs> i was just like i was i don't know i was imagining like he'll just make a top 10 road trip list or a, <laughs> a top 10 old buck owens record i found list <laughs> <laughs> yeah dylan feels um what is it anachronistic sometimes <laughs> with the uh out of time style, out of place his style of dress and the type of stuff he's into that's okay. Good for him. I like listening to your other guests' best of lists, though, too, because, you know, while I, I don't think that your your podcast is is like super narrowly focused, and you and Dylan both have like a you know a pretty expansive definition of of punk, and you let all kinds of guests in on that. I like the best of because it it reminds me that you know everybody's not just one thing. We don't we don't all only listen to punk all the time. Yeah. So that's how I try and approach it, and in, in, in how I you know, think about my list. Yeah, because I think that would be exhausting. 
if that's the only thing you listen to and your I don't know, your frame of reference will be so narrow and yeah. We listen to a lot of different stuff. Yeah, there is I don't know, there's there's like something something I respect about being that narrow, but it's not something I, I think I could ever do in my own listening practices. My my dear friend Todd and I have this long standing memory of you know, finding the kind of like garagey punk record store in Ottawa as teens. And on one of our first visits, the host saying to us, I've never had a fucking Madonna record in here. (laughs) (laughs) They're very cool. (laughs) Awesome. I mean, we thought we we definitely thought it was cool at the time, but now (laughs) I'm, I'm just like, Oh, okay. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) And the thing is that guy was probably like old, like older than like should have that type of <laughs> narrow of a viewpoint for sure it was it was like the the, the garage rock dad record store hangout <laughs> shout at the birdman sound it lasted longer than it probably should have <laughs> and hey maybe give madonna a chance she has a couple good songs maybe i wonder if i wonder if he likes madonna yet <laughs> he changed his opinion yeah how do you want to start this? Do you want me to talk about my list? I sent you my list. Yeah, uh, you sent I me made a... some notes about my list. Or I also told you a couple weeks ago that I wanted to talk about like how you and I approach oh, yeah. listening, and I was going to make maybe maybe a subtle shift to how I how I approach new music in the new year because I find myself exhausted by the way I do it currently. <laughs> uh, yeah, I. If for those unfamiliar, uh, I have a very specific way that I keep track of what I listen to over the year and what I plan to listen to, and uh, I uh, it follows it to you, where you uh, or the ringed it to you, where <laughs> you also have started doing a similar system. We have different uh, ways of tracking it specifically, but um, I'll run through mine real quick just so everyone can keep track. I so I keep track of stuff that's coming up whenever I see something like announced or I hear like a a song that I like and I'm like, okay, I'm going to write this down keep this on my list, which is something I got from you, actually, as far as tracking upcoming stuff. Yeah, because it used to be I would just wait and just be like, I'll wait and see what comes out. But I would miss stuff that way. Mm. And then what I do is I, I compile a list of stuff to listen to, like usually like the release day on Friday. This last semester of school really messed with that system because I had to work on Friday. So it ruined my whole like last quarter of the year as far as tracking new music. But and then I listen through it over the week and then I keep a list alphabetically of everything I listen to and uh, rate it, whatever my system is. So that's the basic outline of it. So what do you do? You, you're you're roughly the same as far as like keeping track of upcoming and then what you have listened to. Yeah, I'm roughly the same in that. I don't I don't add the rating to it. I just yeah. have this long this long note in my phone um, where yeah I have a an already listened to list and I have a, a to listen to upcoming list where I kind of track what's what's coming out soon. Um, but I think I don't think I'm going to change too much about that what i think though is that i need to loosen or i need to loosen up my my restrictions a little bit around like you know i've had this kind of commitment to the list where if something makes it onto the list because you know what i do i think you do this similarly is is i'll sample a couple songs if i hear something and if it sounds good and it sounds like something i'd want to hear the rest of i'll add it to the list I don't know. I've, I've almost treated this list as like something sacred where if it's on the list, I commit to listening to it. And what I realized in the process of kind of making this list or starting to think about this, this, you know, my, my favorite albums of the year list was that there is so much that I listen to that I, I just have no memory of. And it, I, I found it a little bit joyless realizing that because of the albums that I really like, well, I, I could have listened to each of those a dozen more times <laughs> rather than, you know, I was just looking through the list. And, and really my only criteria is, is I bold it if I like it and I leave it unbolded if I didn't really like it. And that kind of helps me think about, you know, stuff at the end of the year. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just looking at this list and, and there's, there's nothing, the things that are bolded, it's like, I can't remember almost any of them. I'm just looking at, I don't know, 
the the four hundred and nineteenth release I listened to this year was Expert Timing Stargazing. I like Expert Timing. I've heard some of their stuff before. I bolded it. I only listened to it once. I don't yeah. remember what it sounds like. And you know, so my 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 total so far, I'm up to five hundred and four releases for the year. And it's just it's so much. <laughs> it's way too much. But I like the process of discovery. I like discovering new bands that I might get excited about. I like you know, I kind of like that 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 hunting and finding process. So I don't want to stop that. I, I kind of have this little routine on Thursday nights because of where I am in the in the time zone. It kind of works out that, you know, anything that's uh, new releases seem to be timed with Eastern Standard Time. So I get new releases around nine o'clock on on Thursday Which, nights. I'm so jealous of that fact because I've heard other people talk about that, too, where I was just like, oh, I want to hear the music three hours earlier <laughs> it makes it so much easier to go through the emails and everything yeah it just gives me a little little jump on on uh, on you you west or east coast elites <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so i do like that process i like that process of sitting down on thursday night and trying to find what's new what i was feeling really stressed out by was that i would i would organize them in these weekly spotify playlists um that just became really unwieldy. Sometimes they're, you know, 10, 11 hours long. And and that's the problem is that out of those 10, 11 hours, there would be some weeks where zero of those hours were enjoyable or I, I retained zero of those hours. Even if I liked something, I don't remember it or I didn't go back to it ever. And, you know, I don't know if that's substantively different than than, than how I've approached finding and and being excited about new music in the past but there's something specific about this like hell cycle of creating a list that you've turned me on to <laughs> um you know has at times felt like it sapped the excitement out of it that doesn't mean that i'm not excited about the albums that i want to talk about today and in you know my favorite albums of the year but it just sometimes feels really unwieldy and like it is definitely quantity over quality. And so what I think I'm going to do for next year is rather than have weekly playlists, because that also gets frustrating because it just, it, it, it began to feel at times like this box that I just had to tick. Like, well, I've added it to the list. I've got to check it off. Yeah. I've got to say, I listened to it, even though it's only for me. And I, and I send my <laughs> list to you at the end of the year so we can kind of compare lists. Um, you know, this is for nobody. This is just something I'm doing to punish myself. What I think I want to do next year is, still keep track of new releases, still keep adding things to the list as I have. Um, but I want to, I want to make monthly playlists. So even though that's probably going to be more unwieldy when it's, you know, like a 30 hour monthly playlist, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I can commit anymore to listening to every single song from every single album that I add to the list. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dump them into this monthly playlist and that gives me something to jump into. It gives me something to keep adding to and it gives me something to jump into. And it doesn't mean that I have to listen to all 30 hours in it. But, you know, I can jump around. I can sample what I like. I can put it on in the background and, and maybe, you know, maybe that will um, kind of satisfy both of those those itches in my brain at the same time where, you know, I want to be able to discover new music and I want to be open to the excitement of discovery of new music but i don't want you know i don't want to be kind of like controlled by this uh like completest attitude well i, I think there's we've talked about this a few times since you started the the process as well where um you have a commitment to, to an album once you've added it to the list yeah and i have the strong belief of no the second you feel like it bail Cut it from the list. It doesn't have to stay. It's in, it's not a permanent list. <laughs> yeah, but then I don't see how you get to like seven or eight hundred releases every year, having listened to with that with that in place. Like that means you have probably a third more than I do on the list. There is stuff with. that definitely gets cut. Um, you're actually outpacing me right now, though. I'm only at four ninety. You said your number was like really? five or something. Yeah. yeah, I do have about twenty on the list that I haven't got to yet but i do uh, i do too <laughs> <laughs> um and i, I just get, i've basically I, I can't, given up i can't wait month. to find out what uh what the universal liberation orchestra sounds like which is a release that i've had on the list since january 28th <laughs> just haven't gotten around to listening to yet or puppy angst from october i'm sure they're i'm sure they're great let's see that's an example of something where like if it stays on the list too long i'll cut it i'll just be like clearly i'm not interested enough to, <laughs> to hear what it is yeah <laughs> So I don't know. Maybe this new approach will do nothing. Um, 
you just created a new monthly hassle instead of a weekly hassle. <laughs> it's, it's possible, but maybe that makes it feel slightly more manageable. But I am happy that, you know, by the end of it, I still have a collection of albums that made me excited. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I think I'm looking for ways to spend maybe more time with the things that I'm really excited about and more, um, a more forgiveness of myself for saying, no, this isn't doing it for me. Yeah. I also am bad about revisiting albums, especially ones that I like. Like, I'm just like, I really like this record and I'm really annoyed that I listened to four EPs from hardcore bands that all sounded the same, but it was just like, well, I could just listen to that one album I wanted to again. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and who are we doing this for? Like for each other, <laughs> it's for you and for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it started as just for me and then i like uh, i gotta spread this to somebody else uh here have this yeah. horrible system though why did, I, dylan, why did i take it from you <laughs> dylan talks about his horrible system that he has himself trapped in he's got his repeating calendar that oh, he yeah. does his, his is real weird i can't i can't get with that he, he was talking about it and i was like he was like i don't know why i've done this to myself he's like i think i'll do this until i hit a repeating year like a year that i've done before and i was just like hopefully it's soon because you got a long time to go (laughs) (laughs) Uh, all right shall we talk about my list i was gonna say uh, listening to music should be a chore and a job not a uh... (laughs) that is correct yeah i have a full-time job i don't get anything from any of this <laughs> <laughs> you at least have, have patrons maybe some of your patrons can send me money too yeah yeah and i'll send them a, i'll send them a voice note about <laughs> put... what i think about the music i listen to hey you could always uh throw your uh throw some audio on the uh, old patreon and we could uh we'll just say <laughs> for Corey on the bottom of every uh in we'll do an invoice every month <laughs> sounds good i don't think we have venmo in canada i should add i should figure out a Get a U.S. address so I can pick one then, mommy. <laughs> well, let's talk about what you actually picked for us to, uh, to talk about today. So. Okay. I think you probably wanted me to do 10. I couldn't do that. I will not abide by your <laughs> you rules. You did 15? How many is this? I think I did 17 or 18. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't cut any more. I did. It was longer. I couldn't cut any more. I think it might be shorter than last year. Last year, I think I did the top 21 of 2021. <sighs> Yeah. I didn't. I didn't want to continue. I would want to keep you on your toes. I didn't want to continue that this year. <laughs> um, where you want to start? Well, last year I think we did something kind of fun where I just talked about everything, and then I think we set some parameters around the discussion. I don't remember what my prompts were, but I think they were around the area of like, tell me something that you agreed with, tell me something you disagreed with, and tell me something you wanted to learn more about. Um, we don't have to do that. We can talk about any of these albums in any way you want. But I kept myself, uh, or I made myself some little notes just so I could kind of blaze through this, and then we can talk about wherever you want to go. Sound okay. good? Yeah, just wherever you feel like starting. Cool. I didn't do this in any particular order. I think that it is mostly in chronological order from just going down my list with a couple of uh, out-of-sync ones. Maybe I'll go backwards, actually. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'm going to do this list backwards. Um, I'm going to start with an album that I discovered pretty recently, just in in November when it came out, uh, and that is Anne Annie's By Morning. Um, Every year, it seems like there's, you know, one or two albums that I find in November or December that kind of slides its way onto this list. And I don't know anything about Anne Annie, except that I am pretty sure it's a solo project from Portland, Oregon. And I just noticed this morning that I missed uh, a second run of, of, I think, 10 lathe cut LPs. And I'm so annoyed because I missed the first 10 and I didn't realize that they were doing a second run. Uh, hopefully there'll be a third. This album is, is, from my perspective, perfect for any mood. And it does something that um, a lot of instrumental music, for me at least, or instrumental or ambient music, really fails to do, which is to actually demand your attention. Um, mm mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's not background music. There's always something interesting happening. It's pretty short, too. I think it's only about half an hour long. But there's always something cool happening, whether it's like a little flourish of pedal steel or a little bit of tape manipulation. And um, I found this on um, on Bandcamp. And also, that's what we should talk about maybe later, is that Bandcamp for me this year had was just like a an endeavor of, of increasingly diminishing returns. <laughs> then you find something like this that makes it worth it. It's like, oh, well, what if I missed this? Then I would have less yeah. in my life. Um, 
anyway, Bandcamp had this tagged as Cosmic Country, which then sent me down a little bit of a, a, another rabbit hole where I found some really cool stuff. But this one really rose to the top. Um, so check it out if you're interested in kind of like instrumental, folksy, guitar-y, country music. I, I remember um, seeing... It's funny because I didn't remember this album and I went to their profile on uh, on Spotify and I remember that photo. So I definitely looked at maybe the band camp. Yep. But maybe maybe because it was instrumental, I was like, uh, not not right now. I'm not a big instrumental listener, mm. really, in general. I have like yeah. one instrumental album on my list this year. But, um, you know, this one kind of did for me something similar to an album that did the exact same thing for me last year that kind of came in at the end and surprised me and became one of my favorites of the year. Um, old saws country tropics. Right. Um, yeah, just like there's this, this really interesting emotional heft to, to instrumental music, which otherwise doesn't always excite me. Um, but I really love this one. Yeah. Uh, next up is, is, is Gladdy, Gladdy or Glady? I don't even know how you say that band name. Gladdy. I think it's Gladdy. I always said Gladdy. I'm... All right. Gladdy. Um, don't know what you're in until you're out. I was I was really bummed when Cayetana broke up, um, but then really stoked a couple years ago when Augusta Coke Augusta Coke uh, mm-hmm. announced Gladdy. Um, and I really liked the first Gladdy album, but I found myself wishing that everything was a little bit more um, more like dialed up, more um, I, you know I don't know I guess like more like Cayetana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and and for this, their second album, I I love that it sounds like it's a little bit more of a full band effort. I love that it gets a little fuzzier, uh, gets a little faster at times, but it also kind of tries out some new sounds, like adds a little bit of twang to the mix. Um, I liked everything about this album, uh, and I and I again, I really liked the first one, but I liked everything about this album more than the first one. You know, whenever that this album came out, I was like, huh, I feel like they were releasing like a lot of they released like what the album and like three eps in 2020 and and then nothing for 2021 and finally this like towards the very end of the year yeah very weird like delay of uh music from them yeah but definitely worth a listen um you know i think that you'll kind of see uh from this list there is probably less uh i don't know less less punk than years before and more going towards, you know, punk adjacent stuff. <laughs> so Gladdy is kind of one of those yeah. one of those albums for me. Yeah. Um, next up is uh, one of my favorite rap albums of the year, Mavi's Laughing So Hard It Hurts. I think he is a fellow North Carolinian. So someone from your backyard. Yeah, never actually never heard of them. Um, but I also don't follow rap really at all. Yeah. Um, I really loved his first album, but here... Uh, on this one the beats are stronger the rapping is a lot more creative uh i really love this one from from beginning to end uh next up is i think i said this to you i, I don't remember maybe i maybe i did maybe i didn't it's tinier uh cadastral maps um who are a band from the smallest of canadian provinces prince edward island all the way on the opposite coast from me um i would love a vinyl release of this so far it is cassette only and i would also love to know more about them they just kind of like dropped this on Bandcamp, and then i don't i don't think they've done anything since then um i would also really love to hear them in a proper studio uh but at least for this album the the, the fuzz kind of suits these songs um to me it it sounds like it's a, it sounds like it's a bunch of punks who grew up listening to stuff like Captain Jazz and but also Bell and Sebastian and also Tiger Trap, but also you're listening to it underwater, which is more <laughs> of just like more of just the, the production aspect to it. Um, but yeah, I think I think on Bandcamp they called themselves a, a Twemo band, which is kind of <laughs> is kind of gross, but <laughs> it works. This was one that I uh, I saw it on the list and I was like I don't know I don't know this band I don't think you did send it to me. Um, oh, maybe I wanted to keep it for the big reveal on the list. Yeah, and uh, and I put it on. I was like, this is the type of thing that I would have actually in, thrown on my list and listened to for sure. I did I did not see this one coming. It was it was self released. Supposed to have been one of those ones you found on your Bandcamp tag discovery. I think it was I think it was self released, but I actually think that they were they were starting to get a little bit of buzz, and I. Th- I think that I saw it on Steve. I, I think I saw it on um, on Instagram, and I think Stephen Lamke from the Constantines and You've Changed Records posted something about it being, I don't know, something he discovered and loved. Yeah, 
Yeah, it got like a very small amount of buzz. Um, we have this this national, um, I don't know, news. Well, it's not really a newspaper, but it's um, like a weekly. It's also not an alt weekly. I don't know. It's called Exclaim. I don't know how to explain it. Other Canadians. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. know of Exclaim because yeah, I've yeah. definitely read reviews from Exclaim. Yeah. Yeah, it's like probably Canada's biggest music news source. Anyway, I I. Also, you, it's one of those things where you just can't unsubscribe from their email list, no matter what you do. So <laughs> just, I just received, I probably entered a, an Exclaim contest once 20 years ago. <laughs> I've been on their email list ever since. And uh, yeah, they wrote about them. And then, I don't know, just heard nothing else about them. Hmm. Uh, but I look forward to hearing more from them. Next up is Bill Orcutt's music for four guitars. Um, Bill Orcutt is someone that I've tried to listen to in the past and just didn't really click for me. Um, I I am not a fan of Bill Orcutt's earlier music and his his old band. Um, this one though really did it for me. It sounds like a Steve Reich album, and I love Steve Reich. I'm excited. There's supposed to be a, a Steve Reich box set coming out in 2023. Um, it sounds like a Steve Reich album played by one man um, multi-tracking his kind of scronky guitar, <laughs> which, yeah, I mean, it sounds annoying. It is annoying, but there is like just enough melody in there to, to hook me. Yeah, this is another this is another instrumental record, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I stand with a little bit of this one before we recorded. Did it annoy you? No, it didn't annoy me. Okay. Um, I was just more like it felt like music that maybe could have had vocals and it would have worked really well like mm. one of those because there's there's some instrumental stuff where i'm always like it's good it's great as instrumental or but then there's the ones that i'm like i wish this instrumental had vocals because then it would be like my favorite thing yeah i can see that yeah i like on this though it, it felt like i don't know it felt like these sketches of, of classical compositions uh and maybe that's why it kind of reminded me of steve reich album because it felt like you know, Steve Reich will have an hour of music, but in that hour of music, there there will be like twenty different movements, and it all works together as a whole. Um, but each movement is its own kind of distinct piece and its own kind of distinct composition. And that's what the Bill Orcutt. That's why I kind of, you know, that's why it reminded me of, of a Steve Reich album is because it all sounds really nice together whole, but each each track is you know like a one and a half to two and a half minute snippet of something cool happening. Yeah, it definitely had a. Immediately, it had like a, a a classical feel to it to me as well, like a classical guitarist or something like that. Yeah, and he, you know, he he is known for his experimentation with guitar. And after kind of finding this album, I, I went back and revisited some of his earlier solo stuff, and um, you know, maybe had a bit more appreciation from when I was younger and probably first trying to get into Bill Orcutt. And I watched a bunch of his live videos, which is 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 seems to be mostly just improvisational uh and and really liked some of what i found yeah cool stuff yeah um i really loved the judy and the jerks lp music to go nuts uh just like perfect snotty punk in and out in 15 minutes i've been excited to hear a full length from them for a while after a bunch of uh eps um from my perspective probably the best band happening right now in this kind of cool uh i i don't know i I don't want to i don't want to uh misapply geographical ranges to the u.s so you can correct me if i'm wrong i think they're from <laughs> hattiesburg missouri uh missouri or mississippi I don't mississippi know. yeah mississippi there we go um and i'm gonna say like midwest slash southern punk <laughs> 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 because i think of stuff like because um the album that put it out thrilling living i think is based in i think is based in indiana and so like there's kind of like midwest and <laughs> yeah the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. um this I actually talked about this band on the uh, A to Z, uh, mm. the, the artists that start with J. And uh, yeah, I really liked it too. It has this um, like 70s, 80s store, sort of like hardcore punk feel to it. And the Hattiesburg, Mississippi thing was the one where I was like, well, that's a weird place for this kind of music to come out of. Because I visited Hattiesburg, Mississippi because my ex used to live there or okay. her mom lived there and she would go there for summers. So yeah. I've been to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and it is rural as fuck. And it's <laughs> it's the type of um, it's the type of town that I mean, this is more this is probably a, uh, yeah definitely more than a decade ago since I was there. So if things have changed, apologies. But um, it was it was the town that my ex loved to point out that like um, they were so against 
uh, desegregation of schools that they built an entire private school for just the white students oh, <laughs> to no. go to. And it was still like that in 2007. Yeah. So it's just like, oof, ouch. So I could see, though, like a group of like radicalized, you know, punks railing yeah, against yeah, that those, kind of those, those ecosystem. Those kinds of weird, yeah, those kinds of weird places are really fertile for, you know, outcasts to band together and and yeah do something to kind of rail against what's happening yeah um, yeah i love a lot of that stuff that's coming out of hattiesburg there's other cool bands coming out of there too and the thrilling living has been doing a really interesting job of documenting what is coming out of not only hattiesburg but also just you know kind of other disaffected locales around the midwest and the south yeah mississippi's the south right yeah 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 i would say it's still south i still say it's the southeast yeah okay it's like right there <laughs> Before it turns into like Southwest, you know. All right, I don't want to offend any Mississippians <laughs> by getting their geography wrong. Um, and then a band that you got me really excited about a few years ago, Camp Trash, the long way, the slow way. I loved their first EP. Uh, I was really excited to hear the LP, and it it did not disappoint. I knew that it was coming out. I don't know. I feel like they I feel like they teased it for about six months, um, and yeah, I wish I could have seen them at Fest this year, but. It could not be. <laughs> yeah, neither one of us could go this year. Maybe next year. Maybe. Hopefully they'll be back. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they will. They're a Florida band, so there's a... Oh, that's true. They're, like, built for a fest. <laughs> <laughs> it's in their DNA. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to know what you thought about this album, and we can we can talk about it later, but, but Fresh, uh, Raise Hell, they were an early pandemic find for me, and I, I really love everything their singer Catherine is involved in. Cheerbleaders also had a really good album this year. Uh, and I know your favorite band, Me Rex, uh, they put out something <laughs> earlier this year. Um, but this fresh album uh, you know, adds maybe like a little bit more of a jangle pop sound at times into what they're already doing, which is you know, more along the lines of uh, you know, that UK indie punk sound. Yeah, I love this album. Um, Fresh have been a band that just kind of consistently keeps putting out really good music. I, maybe to the point where like each release is better than the one before. Um, yeah, this might be one of my favorite things that they've put out. Yeah, I really like this album. Yeah, it was a real, um, it was a real. I don't know, growth in 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 songwriting uh, on this one. Yeah, I really like seeing the the progression from the last album to this one. Mm-hmm. And I and I love the last album too. Yeah, it was really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, on this next one, I'm wondering, is there any album? Uh, we could talk about this after too, but I'm wondering if there's any album that kind of on on your list surprised you at how much you liked it because I remember putting this album on my list early in the year and you know thinking I would get into it and then just really being surprised at how much I enjoyed it and how much I went back to it and that's Porridge Radios. Annoyingly titled Water Slide Diving Board Ladder to the Sky, or poetically titled, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. <laughs> I like it, but I, I think I've shown it to other people, and they're like, what's, what's with this title? No thanks. Um, similarly to like another band that we'll talk about later, I would have talked about them first if I was going in, in, in uh, chronological order. Um, I, I thought that their their first releases were were okay. Like I heard their first, I think they've got two other albums, maybe three other albums, and I thought they were okay, but nothing that I really went back to. And then this one just demanded my attention every time I put it on. Um, you know, I've talked before, probably on here, or maybe just to you, about not really being the biggest fan of a lot of the kind of post punk stuff that's come out of the UK in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, but but. Porridge Radio has done something I think really, really special here. Um, and this is an album that, you know, I kind of look forward to, to growing alongside. I, I went back to it constantly throughout the year. Um, the lyrics are really stunning. They're smart and they're sad. And the band behind them just kind of matches the mood really beautifully throughout. Um, just a real, a real journey to listen to. Yeah, I listened to this record this year, too. And I, I remember not I didn't. I liked the last record they put out, but I wasn't like in love with it or anything like that. And definitely remember when this one came out being surprised at how much I enjoyed it. Cause I definitely was one of those things where it was like, I liked the last one. Okay enough, but it didn't, it wasn't anything that popped into any sort of ro- ro- rotation. And, uh, this one was definitely like a big improvement 
I don't know if that's the right word for it, but it hooked me more. Yeah. Than than their last record. Yeah, it was a surprising one. Yeah, same. Cool. Um, I think this is my only other hip hop album on the list, but like Kelly 47's Shape Up. Um, I I love a, a perfect opening track and chitty bang just like blows everything else on the album out of the water and and the rest of the album is incredible too she's just like wrapping her ass off across you know two-thirds of it and then kind of slows things down and, and sings on the other third um the beats are like a plus throughout um just i liked everything about this also kind of took me by surprise this year i wasn't familiar with her, her earlier albums uh but i went back and really appreciated them as well but yeah i really loved this one i was uh surprised at her her I guess flow, it it's it feels more reminiscent of the type of rap I enjoy the most. It's mm. like kind of quick and very like, um, I don't I don't know musical terms well enough to really describe like the way it, way she raps. But she she doesn't do the thing that a lot of rappers do now, where it's just very slow raps now right. and lots of like auto tune and like effects on vocals. Like I just yeah, that's the more like the more mainstream leaning rap tends to tends to yeah. have but yeah yeah i can see that yeah there's a little bit of more of like an old school feel to the way that she raps mm-hmm. yeah cool um i i thought that this this next band had had broken up um but instead <laughs> instead they dropped a perfect pop punk album just as the weather started warming up and that is joyride and their album miracle question um they were their first couple albums were out on salinas and uh I don't know. I was really excited to to see that they were back. Um, this album is is really cute, but it's not it's not cloyingly annoying. Uh, yeah. It's catchy. It's fast. Um, this band, I think, should be huge, but I don't think that they really care to be. Yeah, they're one of those bands. They don't have like much of a presence online. Like they have a band camp, and mm. I think the lead singer has like an Instagram, but that's it. Like it's not like a band account or anything like that. Yeah, they definitely are just like. We made a record and it's out and that's kind of the extent of it. Yeah, and I, I did I did notice, you know, some other um when I say other, I mean like places that maybe wouldn't have covered them five or six years ago when their last album came out. I noticed them popping up in places like Stereogum and Brooklyn Vegan, um, you know, places that have tried to expand their, their coverage of, of punk and pop punk bands over the last couple of years. Um so I don't know, maybe they had a different different press agent behind them <laughs> this year trying to get them out um yeah i was i was excited to see some other people getting excited about it though yeah it's one of the it's one of my favorite records of the year for sure yeah i loved it um and then an album that i don't think you liked very much but camp copes running with the hurricane it was the accent thing right you don't like australian people is that it uh yeah i think all australians are uh, <laughs> criminals like their their history is no um i no, I don't think I had any problems with this record. I, I thought you didn't if, like it. I feel like I remember saying that about someone, but maybe not this album. <laughs> okay. There was someone whose accent was driving me crazy, and I couldn't remember. <laughs> oh, actually, I think I might know what it is next. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Camp Cope. Um, I I really love this album. It was kind of like a softer side of the band, mm-hmm. uh, but but still, you know, full of rage. Um, Georgia Max vocals are just as powerful as ever on it um and the songwriting for me feels like a band that's kind of in the midst of like a really interesting and a really thoughtful transition to um not like a different altogether sound but just like a i don't know like a maturation in sound just something cool is happening musically i thought it had a little bit of more of a folksy feel to it than the last album did last album i felt like was in that indie emo vein whereas this one i think is it's pulling in a couple different more acoustic elements to their music yeah there's a bit of piano on it too there's Mm -hmm. um yeah maybe not as much distortion on the guitars i don't know i liked everything about it i think this might be the the other accent band uh the beths expert in a dying field (laughs) no not them either i don't know who it was now i really can't remember don't you hate people from new zealand too no, yeah, those kiwis, <laughs> right? Uh, is that what they're called? <laughs> yeah. Um, I I loved this album. I think that everything that the Beths already did really well is is better on this album. I think that the lyrics are clever. The band sounds super tight. Um, I love an album, again, kind of like the the Kelly Forty Seven album. I love an album that that opens and closes with perfect songs. Um, 
this, this one opens with the title track and it closes with a song called 2 a.m and both of those songs are probably in my most listened to songs of the year just like endlessly repeatable but for totally different reasons um yeah i just thought everything they did well on their first couple albums was, was better here yeah i like this album too i i'm trying to remember i think it was i think i like the last one a little more i don't know maybe i did like this one better though this is one that i didn't revisit a lot it came out in the latter half of the year right yeah it came out in september yeah so i, I don't think i revisited this one outside of like the one or two listens i got through but hmm. yeah um did you listen i don't know if you listen to this album ribbon stage hit with the most only when you sent me your list i checked it out but okay. i was not familiar with this one at all okay um they released you know probably one of the best seven inches of the last couple of years in in 2020 just this perfect four song like eight minutes of of just like really perfect fuzzy indie pop um yeah and this year we got like 19 more minutes of it it's super concise super catchy killer melodies throughout um yeah just like fuzzed out guitar i love everything about this yeah it was a little bit i sampled this morning was really good i didn't i'd never even heard the name of this group before but it was very intriguing to me yeah well worth a listen um all right just a few more I've got this is, uh, you know, to anyone who listened to our episode from last month, no surprise. But Martha's Please Don't Take Me Back. Um, I talked probably more than enough about Martha and how much I loved them the last time I was on the pod. Um, but they're just so incredibly consistent. This is like a perfect power pop, indie punk, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, pissed off, but still hopeful. Um, yeah, important, important energy to take into 2023. I don't know if you knew this, but I, I think someone commented on our episode we did for the martha record and they said <laughs> get this guy off of here <laughs> no they said that like oh well, i guess uh, even though you didn't seem to like it very much and i guess i gave off the impression that i didn't like the album that much <laughs> um and I, I think i did like that record so it was kind of funny i was like oh i guess just the way i fixate on like the one thing i don't like <laughs> the one thing you don't like yeah um all right, I know you didn't like this album either, but um, <laughs> yeah, one of one of my favorites from from this year. And I think one of the things you know, you and I have talked about is that albums that come out earlier in the year tend to get more of your attention, just mm-hmm. you know, because you spend more time with them, I guess. And I don't know, maybe that's maybe that's another issue to go back to our earlier conversation about, um, like my issue with this list is that it and it, it's not it, this is only a block in my head, but it almost like it 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 almost puts up this wall that like no i only listen to this because it came out in 2022 i will not listen to this in 2023 <laughs> but that's, not, that's ridiculous that's such a ridiculous way to think about things um anyway this one came out in february and it's black country new roads ants from up here um as i've said with a couple other releases on this list i i i love an album that just demands that you pay attention to it that it it, it can't be background music um i you know i look forward to seeing what kind of future iterations of the band without Isaac do because I don't know if you know much of the lore behind this album but they released it and then either a week before or a week after the singer announced that he was leaving the band hmm. um, that he couldn't continue on being a musician anymore hmm. um, and yeah I don't know I don't I don't I don't want to say it like took the wind out of their sails but it felt like a band that could have like really blown up and instead had to kind of reimagine themselves and they, they're you know they're continuing on and they have um you know, I, I haven't I haven't watched any of the live vids because I'm excited to see what it sounds like recorded first. But they they did continue on touring, just not playing any of these songs because they're songs they wrote with their former singer. Um, yeah, so I had to pivot really quickly and and you know kind of reinvent themselves as a band. So I look forward to seeing you know what that hap- what that looks like. Um, and in the meantime, I'm really grateful that they released this. It sounds like an album that kind of took a lot out of them. Uh, it sounds like I don't want to say it sounds like a band at their peak because that you know that suggests that they won't reach somewhere higher. Um, but you know this version of the band is just like I, I liked their first album, but I loved everything about this album. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot of a. It's a lot for a band to ask you to you know pay attention to them for an hour or close to an hour. Um, but I listened to this from start to finish so many times this year. This was one of those um, bands that I think we had this little thing back and forth that we only did like once where we were like, um, we sh- we should 
if there's an album that we like and we really want the other person to like give it an earnest attempt at listening yeah. to let's 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 try you know we'll actually go for it and so this i think this is the one that like we tried i don't remember when i gave you to try um oh i don't remember either i don't remember what it was it may, i may have even been like trying to give you something and you were like oh i planned on listening to that already so i, I didn't mm. think we did that okay but this is one that you were like, I really want you to try and listen to it. And so like, I was like, <laughs> I will. I will put this on and I will listen as closely with the open mind as I possibly could. And I, I just couldn't. It just didn't work for <laughs> I couldn't get into it at all. And that's me. That's my problem. I, I'm the one uh, who couldn't get into it. But uh, <laughs> I tried to. And I was like, I really want to like this album. But I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, and I mean, unfortunately for your listeners who may not be familiar with this album uh, and and want kind of a sample of what it sounds like, unfortunately, like all the best comparisons I have are deeply problematic bands now, but, (laughs) (laughs) you know, maybe just go and give it a shot. They're not problematic, but all the the easiest comparisons I could make are just (laughs) going to upset someone. (laughs) All right, two more. Um, I don't think you'd like this one either, but... And and I, I I don't like saying this name out loud. This is like the one downside of the band. But Saturn, <laughs> like the, like the planet, but sad. Saturn's <laughs> radiator. Um, they should just maybe get a new band name. But everything else about them is perfect. Um, every year I think there's kind of one uh, wispy, folksy album that really does it for me. And this was the one this year. Um, you know, Genevieve's lyrics are are both introspective while also feeling expansive, like opening up to something beyond the, the self. Um, and the band backing them up is just super on point. Harmonies are incredible throughout. Um, yeah, everything just sounds crystal clear and just recorded really well. I really loved everything about this album. Um, I did listen to this one, and I, I did like it. I just don't think I liked it as to the level you did. But um, yeah. yeah, this wasn't one that I disliked at all. Um, it's just a solid kind of... Yeah, the singer songwritery variety of music. Yeah, there's always yeah. one. There's always one for me. Yeah, that was it this year. Um, all right, last one on my list, and then we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Is "Blue Skies" by Dead. Um, I absolutely love this album from start to finish. It takes everything that they do already well and just ramps it up. The hooks are hookier. Um, everything that. I love that is wild about Emily's voice is wilder. Um, the songs that Jason and Eric get to sing are allowed to sing are even stronger. Um, yeah, I, I just really loved it from start to finish. Um, I love a band that kind of, not always, but in, in particular instances, I really love a band that like has a lane, but finds ways to be experimental within this. Like you, you just, you know what you're going to listen, you know what you're going to get when you're listening to a, to a dead album. And yet they still find ways to, you know take kind of creative detours uh even within those those parameters yeah dead's a band that actually our youngest brother introduced to me and dylan and we were just like who how'd you find this band and he just (laughs) found it on like a spotify playlist or like a similar artist thing and so like i've just been like okay i'm gonna follow this band along and see what they do going forward and uh yeah this is probably the more does it feel like the more energetic or upbeat record they've done out of the three or the three, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely feels like there's a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit more fun behind it this time around. Yeah. And they had a bit, they had a bigger label this time. So then I'm assuming they had a slightly bigger budget for recording. It just, you know, everything sounds a little better. And I love their, you know, their fuzzier earlier albums, but I like it. I like the, the, the clearness, the clarity of this one. Yeah. Yeah. Really loved it. Awesome. That's my list. Awesome. Any, um, any big overall feelings on 2022 was <laughs> thoughts on music or just in general? <laughs> no, just that, that I need to, I, I don't know. I need to find a way to make this sound, to make this, this process slightly less unwieldy. I need to treat it less like, <laughs> like it's a job that pays me nothing. And like it's uh, a research for a, yeah. a paper that you're doing. Yeah, Maybe I need to actually do <laughs> my real research. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably be helpful for my employers if I, didn't, <laughs> if I did my work instead of making lists like this anything um stand out on my list that you wanted to talk about 
Um, I mean, I kind of spoke as they were coming along. Yeah. I guess, though, if I was to pick my favorite stuff on here, it's probably the Joyride and Fresh Records. Those are probably like, like I, out of this list, I would put it in like number one and number two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was a couple things I just wasn't familiar with at all, which was uh, interesting to see. We've definitely, um, we've talked about like sharing our lists just to see like what the overlap was. Yeah, and, uh, yours usually has a lot more hardcore EPs on it than mine does. Yeah, yeah. I kind of tap out around five to ten hardcore EPs. <laughs> <laughs> but it always it's always funny how like how much music, even though we'll both be like at five hundred albums for the year, we'll be like, oh, um, how much of it overlaps? And it was like I think last year we compared lists, and it was maybe like a third overlap. Yeah, yeah it wasn't a lot. Surprising, like wow, there's that much music. That the yeah. two of us just dug into. <laughs> We're not doing our jobs well enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, All I don't right. have anything else to say. Thank you for having me on. Um, yeah. I don't know. Congratulations on another year of your show. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for being part of the show. From I don't think you were on year one because the year one was only like the last like three or four months of the year. So I don't think we had anybody on that. But you were one of the first guests we had on the show. So you're always someone that we would like to come back to and. Thank you for filling in for Dylan this year when he was on his staycation. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'll do it again next year when you fire him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dylan, you're not carrying enough weight around here. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, pal. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, we will be, uh, I don't keep an eye out for the rest of the other guest lists we have coming up. So we got some familiar faces coming back. So thank you, everyone. And we'll see you later. All right, everyone. Welcome back to our end of year 2022 retrospective. Uh, This is another one of our guest list episodes. And we're joined by our good friend and host of the podcast, one band, five songs, the Oklahoma lefty, David Brown. Dave, how's it going? You totally forgot the name of my podcast for a second there. I could see it in your eyes. You're I like, don't know what it I don't I was like <laughs> one band and then I questioned myself. And I was like, did I say that wrong? And then, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know. I, I hadn't been saying it on the show recently. Maybe No, that that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, I, I'm all right. I, I have covid, so I sound like crap. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's coming back around, everybody. I mean, it never went anywhere, but. It seems yeah. like uh, there's a big, big spike happening right now. I mean, at this point, it's going to be the flu. It's, yeah. Uh, Which, as long as it stops, uh, you know, killing people at the rate that it was, then uh, we'll be able to live with it, you know. But yeah, yeah. Well, we'll yeah. see. Well, hopefully, you get better soon. I, as Thanks. someone who just had a cold that w- would didn't go away for two weeks or whatever it was, uh, I feel your pain as far as uh your own vocal performance there yeah yeah so uh so 2022 this was a this was a year right um yeah i i can't tell if i thought this or not or throughout the whole year but recently i was like man i think this was one of the worst years of my life so <laughs> i don't know how you felt <laughs> you know, it, it's funny i i don't know if i would go so far as to say that but i've really not to go down my own rabbit hole because no one cares but um you know i i struggled with a bunch of stuff and i finally started going to therapy which i highly suggest to everyone i should have done it years ago and uh so yeah it was just a super stressful year i don't know if it's the worst year of my life i can't say that in good faith but it was a weird year and it was just one of those years where a whole bunch of stuff the buildup of crap and it's starting to overflow and you just kind of (laughs) It's an overflowing year, so yeah. I'm I'm glad it's it's almost over. Yeah, but, maybe not worst year, but definitely one of the hardest for me, for sure. Yeah, I, just that it's the balancing act of work and school, and oh yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Just wait, just wait till you do grad school. Yeah, I don't think I'm doing that. Good call. <laughs> Good call. But, I think I'm happy with my associates that I'm gonna get in the spring. So there you go. <laughs> So, you know, it's weird, though, that the weirdness of this year also translates over to music because as I do every year, I try to look at a lot of year end lists to see how drastically different I am from everyone else. And uh, I I mean, 
at my list is very different. I think there was one, maybe two records on my entire top 30 list, which trust me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not, we're not going through all of it. I'm not going to make <laughs> you suffer through that. Uh, if you want to read it all, I'm sure Justin will put a link down in the yeah, description. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so there was like one or two that were showing up on a lot of, a lot of lists, but there's a lot of stuff that, I mean, I heard about, but there hasn't been a consensus number one album or a consensus album that has been, you know, this is, this is kind of what we're going to uh, remember 2022 by. Cause like in a way, um, Phoebe Bridger's Punisher was 2020's album. I don't remember if it ranked number one on a ton of lists, but it was on basically everyone's list. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this year it has not had that. And, but even still it's my, my list is drastically different. I'm really looking forward to hearing what the other guests of the show have, uh, have talked about because I just always feel like I'm out in a freaking Island. Yeah. 2022. Like I looked at a bunch of lists too. And also, does it seem like everybody's taking their time putting their list out this year? I think so, which is kind of nice. I think it is it, – it, it's it's also spread out because some years it's like the first week of December, everyone dumped their list at the same time. And yeah. this year it's been spread out more often. And honestly, I think maybe there's just a lot more overflowing happen happening with people Yeah. Um, this year maybe. And I mean at the end of the day, it's not like any of it really matters. So – Right, yeah. This is all just a fun thing that we all love to engage in and uh, yeah. read lists and compare them. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely was a, a year. I I even pulled up because Metacritic does this thing where they kind of do the like they base it off of the ratings that they get through their website. Yeah, and so it's almost a little bit more of a it's just general consensus. Right. But it's also Metacritic, and they're not necessarily the most like music reviewy website out I there. Kinda, I, I look at least their music section as the Rotten Tomatoes of music, because they yeah. they do that the whole aggregate. What's everyone think of this? And then, but yeah, sorry, continue. And I'm looking at it now just to see. I do see a couple. Th I see maybe three things that um, I would I would consider on my list. But even then, it, I want to see what their number one is. Or maybe their, let's see, what's their top picks here? Uh, I don't know if this, I don't know if this is the right order. It's going up in numbers. That's weird. <laughs> um, let's see, come on. Ros Rosalia, I saw that list on list some other list. Nova Twins, Black Country, New Road, Beyonce. Like it's that, it's more mainstream stuff. SZA. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen Black Country New Road on a bunch of lists. I've seen Beyonce on a bunch of lists. I've seen like The Weeknd on some lists. I've yeah, seen, that one's on here too. I think I saw the 1975 on at least one list. I mean, one of the I do listen to the show IndieCast, which is hosted by um, Stephen Hyden and Ian Cohen, and so I knew by name a bunch of records that I saw on a lot of these lists, but I'd never listened to any of them. And the the one record that showed up on most lists that is on mine, not in the section we're going to talk about, but is the uh, the the Beth's album, which I think is very good. Mm -hmm. I have seen that one pretty pretty consistently ac across the board. And there's one more on your list that I think uh, I saw a couple places too. And then good friend Corey actually featured it on his list, so we'll talk about it when we get there. But oh, cool. Okay. Well, I yeah. guess we should uh, stop dancing around it. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, I'm I'm not going to make you guys listen to all my my thoughts on uh, all 30 of these. We're going to focus, I think, on the top five. But I figured, just for for uh, um, context's sake, I would give you just say what 10 through six are, if that's cool with you. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So at number 10, I have semantics with "Paint Me Blue." Um, and one oh one thing you are going to notice there's a running theme of of the indie punk genre or tag or whatever showing up in a lot of these releases, especially if you go through the entire list. Mm. Um, so it's basically a lot of bands who listen to you know like your your Lemonheads and uh, Buffalo Toms and stuff like that and listen to punk and mixed it all together. 
Um, so yeah, uh, Painted Blue by Semantics is number 10. Number nine is Running with a Hurricane by Camp Cope. Uh, that would be the one that good friend Corey actually had on his list too. Okay, yeah. That one, so there, there are two albums on my top 10 that when I originally put the list together were way, way lower. And as I was going back through, I was listening to everything and I just, I was like, okay, no, I have to move these up higher. Uh, and this was one of them. Um, the other one we'll get to in a minute. Uh, so the, it's, it's just, it's a different record than their last one, but I, I mean, I think it's really good. Uh, mm -hmm. my number eight was, uh, Ben Lee with I'm fun. Uh, I love Ben Lee. He's just great. Uh, you said that was the the one record on here. You were like, I don't know this one. Yeah, that was the one. Uh, and unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to actually dive into it to see what it was about. Um, but yeah, that's like the one I was like, Ben Lee, don't know that name. Yeah. In the 90s, he was in a band called Noise Addict. And oh. they they were signed to Grand Royal, the Beastie Boys label. And his yeah. first solo records were put out on that. Hmm. Um the Ataris wrote a song about him, uh, <laughs> but because they hate him, apparently. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think he's fantastic. I've e I've emailed with him a few times, and he's always been very kind. Well, isn't the Ataris also one of those bands that's famously just the lead singer, and then he constantly has to have a new lineup behind him? Probably, probably. <laughs> that having been said, uh, that so long a story album is is really good. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, so number seven, we have Raise Hell by Fresh. Uh, and number six was Cluttered with Transgender Dysphoria, Dystopia Blues. I almost told you the name of the uh, that <laughs> Against Me album. Um, <laughs> and the one thing I do want to say about Cluttered, this was, so there were four Maddie Grace projects that mm -hmm. ended up on my list. And she rules. Mm -hmm. um, and this was... I don't see, and I don't know which of her bands is, is the current one or what, I don't know. Uh, she, she's got a lot going on. Uh, mm -hmm. but this one to me is the one that's like really reminds me of reviver mm -hmm. in that it's not that they sound exactly like reviver, but it's in that same lane. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're out there and if you miss reviver, because who knows what's going on with that band, um, I highly suggest checking out cluttered. Absolutely. Cluttered. Maddie has on, had an awesome year of like, yeah. like almost everything that she put out this year. I was just like, ah, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. You know, yep. where do you find the time? Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll get into number five uh, was Beach Bunny with emotional emotional creature. This was the other album that was way lower on my list. And as listening to it, I realized, no, I've actually listened to this a lot this year and that if I take a lot of stock and if, if this isn't, if there's an artist that I will buy their stuff, especially buy physical copies of their stuff, especially right out the gate, as soon as I hear about a, um, a pre-order, it probably should be pretty high on my list. And mm -hmm. That was actually both the case with Camp Cope and with Beach Bunny. As soon as the pre-order came out, boom, I ordered it. And it it's what so what I never realized is because I would go and look at this band's page on Spotify. I'm like, damn, there are a lot of these songs that have over a million listeners and <laughs> like over a million monthly listeners. I'm like, how? How is this <laughs> happening? And apparently it, you know, it started out as a solo project, but apparently blew up on TikTok. Oh, really? Yeah. So, that? yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, so it's like indie power pop rock, um, is probably the best way to explain it. Yeah. It's definitely upbeat, catchy, strong melodies. Yeah. Power pop is an element there. Little that '90s alternative rock feel to it. Yeah, it's 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 a really good record. Um, I think I talked about it on the 2022 20, A to Z, and uh, I initially was like super stoked for it when it you know was announced and was coming out, and I really enjoyed it when it came out. But for some reason, it didn't hit my like rotation. I don't know if it was just based on just my year or what I've had going on this year, but I didn't listen to this one nearly as much as I did um, 
Honeymoon, which came out in 2020, which was like one of my most played albums that year. Nice. And uh, listening to it again to kind of refresh for it, I was like, definitely should have been listening to this more because I, de- I would have considered it much higher up on my list for sure. Yeah, it's um, so it's weird. Like you said, it, it didn't jump into your rotation when because I'm a dork and I use the last FM scrolls, I have periodically throughout the year gone to see like what have I done listened to year to date and to and um most of my listening has either been podcast related or uh the two top records art and artists on my list so uh we'll get there in a minute but yeah it's I, and I I equate a lot of that to just being older and having limited amount of time between work grad school trying to do a podcast and all that mm. stuff uh, so uh I definitely yeah. feel that pod i definitely feel that podcast time taking up a lot of your listening where yeah. it's just like oh yeah i listened to a lot of stuff this year but it was like a lot of this one thing because i <laughs> i needed to listen to it to right research yeah. it i mean you gotta prep because you don't want to just get on there and go oh yeah it's fine um you want to <laughs> yeah. have something to say <laughs> Um, on to number four, we have New Junk City with Beg a Promise. Um, I think, was it you that described this as hitting that lane of, of like the lane that um, the now canceled beach slang kind of occupied um, in the way they're, they're kind of their anthemic? It's also kind of the, you know, if you like Japan droids, you'd probably like this kind of thing. Um, I can't remember if it was you who said that or somewhere else where I read that. I think it was, what was that? I I definitely feel I remember saying that, but I don't remember if it was for this album or not. But I I see, I I can apply it to this album for sure. Yeah. This is, so my my biggest, and complaint's not the right word, um, I just wish this record had come out a lot earlier in the year. Yeah. uh, Because I I know it would have, it would have gotten more rotations. Another thing that was really interesting is, you know, when you're you're listening to something on Spotify and it comes to an end and then it just throws up, you know, a related or similar type song. Mm-hmm. Uh, New Junk City showed up a lot for me doing that. Uh, but the one song that popped up more than anything else was Double Whiskey Coke No Ice. <laughs> So that was, uh, depending on where I looked, that was probably my number two most listened to song this year. That's funny. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, New Junk City, really, really good, catchy, anthemic punk rock. Um, so so yeah, they're, they've often been compared to like the Mensingers, Green Day, Jim Blossom's Gaslight Anthem, um, Faster, Weaker Than Songs. I, I thought that was funny. Um, <laughs> I don't yeah. quite hear that, but... <laughs> I can a little. Um so yeah, I thought this was a this was a really good album. And I just found this band this year. So this was one of those. Wait a minute, this band's been around for how long? So uh, okay, my experience with this band has been I've seen their name on like fest lineups probably for years at this point, and I I didn't know who they were. I didn't know what they sounded like. I'll be honest, I don't think it's a good name for a band. I don't think it's a very good band name. I think it could be better. Yeah, yeah, it's not great. It's not a name that I go what. You know, it's not a name that I want to go listen to based on just New Junk City. I don't know. It, it's kind of a play on New Jack City. And um, and when I heard it for the first time, I was like, where? What? What? Why has no one told me about this band? Like, I haven't dug into their earlier stuff. Does it sound similar to this? Yes. Yeah. I okay. mean, it's basically the same sound. Yeah. This band is criminally under the radar. I mean, they mm-hmm. have signed to AF Records, which is Anti Flags label, uh, which side note super annoying i signed up for their mailing list and every email is just anti-flag stuff and (laughs) yeah i know it's your label but damn come on you know um chris number two i don't know who has the email list but (laughs) but in af records is at this point one of the bigger you know punk indie labels but yeah this criminally underrated band i think all right, so moving along to number three, this is the uh, final Maddie Grace project, and the first one I heard this year, which is Future Girls and the uh, EP Year Long Winter. This is one of those records that 
as soon as I heard it, it woke me up. I was like, oh, crap, what is this? <laughs> I need more of this in my life. And yeah, it was just instantly I was like, OK, this will be in my top five guaranteed of the year done. Um, and it's it's fantastic. It's I'm trying to think what's the best way to describe this musically. Um, just go listen to it. It's in, in some ways it's kind of like, you know, you're indie punk stuff like fresh and Muncie girls, but it's, it's definitely, it's a little bit different. So it's, in fact, I'm looking at my review here and I said, it's not ironically, it's not unlike new, new junk city. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, and this is the, uh, of all of her projects, I think this is the one that's the farthest on the back burner. Um, yeah. Which I think, sorry, I think it's a, a little bit older project. Maybe that's kind of how I read it. Yeah, this was, um, I think Maddie put some songs together that she thought were best for future girls and, and reached out to those people. And it was done. A lot of this was done during kind of lockdown times. Mm -hmm. And so they recorded stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just awesome. It's it's poppy indie punk. This one was really funny because the day you were sharing it on like social media, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was like, oh, this looks interesting. And I went to look at it. I was like, oh, Halifax band. That's funny. And then like, I looked at the liner notes and I was like, wait a second. We are talking to Maddie Grace today on the podcast. Like it was like the same day you, you were sharing. It was the same day we had scheduled to record with Maddie. And I knew her through cluttered at that point. So I didn't even oh, know about yeah. future girls yet. <laughs> that's awesome. That is that. Yeah, that's a serendipity right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's the right word, right? Serendipity for, yeah. for something. OK, serendipitous. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, so number two is a vulture wake. And what is so they the band put out two EPs this year, one called Kingdom, one called Animal. And then for a vinyl release, their label Thousand Island Records put them together to put on a 12 inch album and called it One Kingdom Animal. And it seems like that is the version that is going to be most promoted or talked about going forward, even though it's really two EPs. <laughs> um, and I'm just being a stickler about that, having to mention this is this is actually a collection, not an album. Um, but it is uh, it's Chad Price from All and Drag the River. So it's it's interesting. This band started out he was actually asked to join it. There was a dude in, um, uh, what freaking band It's one of like those fat bands. Um, anyway, so basically it was this kind of super group, right? And, uh, Chad came in and wrote vocals for all the song, wrote vocals, lyrics for the songs and, and wrote one song that was on their full length debut, which I've already blanked on the title of God. I'm doing great. Uh, the appropriate level of outrage. And so listening to that album, it definitely sounded more like, oh, OK, this is definitely, you know, kind of a fat wreck type band. Uh, it had that that typical there's a there's a very specific bad religion, no effects type drum beat that is in those skate punk type bands that mm. to me is a is a it's a big fat wreck thing. Um, but the one song that he wrote for the appropriate level of outrage, which is called fraud, I was listening to, it, I was like, Oh, Holy crap. This could have been an all song. This should have been an all song. This is, <laughs> it just jumped right out to me. So over time, uh, basically everyone except the guy who started the band, which is the guitar player bailed. And Chad price reached out to, uh, two guys from Oklahoma, um, Dave Klein, and, uh, who's a bass player, who um, has most notably played in late renditions of Screeching Weasel and Black Flag, uh, and John Hernandez, who's the drummer. Uh, they were both in a band called uh, Wretch Like Me at some point in the early aughts, late 90s. I, I don't, can't remember when that band was active. And... They were in a band together, a local band called They Stay Dead, which is which is great. And these guys were were slash are humongous fans of all in the Descendants. So 
it was a perfect mix. So they record the album in Oklahoma, in Edmond, with uh, Mike from um, All American Rejects. He has a studio in his house. I can never pronounce his last name. It starts with a K. So they record the record there. And then afterwards, the guitar player bounced. And so they've had kind of a revolving door of guitar players. And it's um, it's real good, uh, especially Kingdom, the first half of, of, of the record. I listened to it. I'm like, yeah, this these all sound like all songs to me in so many <laughs> ways. Um, and Dave would probably kill me for saying this, but the the way that he and John play one, they're just tight as hell together because they've been playing together for over 20 years in various yeah. projects. But you listen to them playing and you're like, oh, yeah, these guys grew up listening to Carl Alvarez and Bill Stevenson. <laughs> you can just hear it in the way they play. Yeah. Um, the second EP, Animal, is it brings out more of Chad Price's prog rock and metal uh, influences, which are throughout the entire record. There's definitely metal elements. There's there's proggy elements, uh, which is you know uh, for a guy who's most well known for for singing in a uh, legendary pop punk band and an alt country band you're like <laughs> yeah. wait this guy listens to yes what <laughs> um but it's uh it's all there this is um probably the second most listened to thing i've listened to this year uh i just especially kingdom those the first half is phenomenal also it's interesting the first half they're all one word song titles and the second one are all multi-word song titles so hmm. I just I, I thought that was interesting. Um, part of me is like, why didn't you just release it as a full length? Um, and part of me completely understands why they did what they did. And especially combining them on one vinyl release makes a ton of sense. Yeah, uh, I did see them uh, play right around the time Kingdom came out in Oklahoma City at a place called the Blue Note. And they were fantastic. Um, Chad Price has an incredible stage presence. You can tell he's been on stage for years. <laughs> and um, his intensity is off the charts. Because you hear some of his vocals and the way that the like guttural screams that he can put out. And, and you think to yourself, there's no way he can do this live. No, he can. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. This what, was... Um... I, I very much enjoyed uh, both of these EPs because I'm like you. I still view them as like separate EPs, but um, I, I agree. I'm like, why didn't why don't you just put it out as one thing anyway? Because that, that's clear. I mean, I guess creatively, maybe there's like some thematic, you know, thing tying these particular songs together in the way that they do that they felt like they should be released, you know, separately. But I'm like you. I like Kingdom a lot more than the than the second one. The second one's really good too, but I, I just connected with the kingdom a lot more. Definitely felt a little bit of the, um, yeah, the more, the more all roots were on that than the, the second one. Cause that one definitely, there's like a hard rock element to their sound too. They're very unique blend of sounds really. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. They really are because they, you know, they, they obviously pull from, from the descendants all tree with Chad price, having been a member of that family. Hmm. But then there's, you know, all this, you know, just hard rock, classic rock, heavy metal, um, prog punk, all sorts of stuff. It is, it's one of the most unique sounding bands going today, I think. And, um, yeah, I, I just, I, uh, I love it. I, I will. Chad price is, in, is, he is my favorite male vocalist of all time. Mm. I I would listen to him sing the phone book uh, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, and I actually stole that line from Stefan uh, Egerton. That was in the liner notes of his of his Seven Degrees album when talking about Chad's song. So I I've definitely stolen that. Um, but yeah, I I think his his vocal range is incredible. Because you go from listening to like this stuff or uh, the the all records, and then you hear the stuff he did with Drag the River and his his solo things, and it's he's just an exceptionally talented singer. Uh, he's also a super super nice guy. 
Uh, and one of my great joys in life was the time at a show when I saw Drag the River, God, I can't remember now, many moons ago, and he recognized me. Um, that was like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm, so this dude I look up to, he actually remembered who I was without having to be reminded. He was like, oh, hey, um, and walked over to me and we talked. So that was super cool. Uh, yeah, I've definitely seen bands like tons of times and, I don't know that I've ever, I mean, unless I actually knew them beforehand, like, I don't think I ever really got that kind of reaction. That's really awesome. Yeah. And I mean, I've got a few bands that I've become friends with over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of a different situation. But, um, but yeah. So I guess we should move on to my number one. Yeah. Uh, which, and if anyone knows me, it should be as come to no surprise that the uh, Frank Turner album that came out this year was my number one record. Uh, it was uh, FTHC, the deluxe version. <laughs> and th this, I listened to this more than anything else. At one point a month or two ago, I was looking at my last FM stats for just artists. And I think I listened to Frank Turner three times more than the next artist down. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's kind of obnoxious. Um, this album is so so good and another thing it's like i i did not see this on any lists anywhere not really i don't yeah. know if because i feel like i've seen frank turner's name on other years past i don't know if just like the type of lists who would have paid attention to it if they if, they, if he was just off their radar for whatever reason i i too was or is it because the record is the type of record that it is. Do you think maybe it's why it maybe, I mean, it is. So he started out, he came from a post hardcore band called a million dead. And when they broke up, he started doing folk punk. Basically it was just him and an acoustic guitar. Uh, eventually he put a band together. Uh, they're called the sleeping souls. And over time, his sound and his, the style of music he plays is kind of evolved into that, Bruce Springsteen lane of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. uh, and this album is his most overtly punk record to date. There are a number of songs on here that are just straight up punk songs. There's one that's like, oh yeah, that sounds like a seven second song. Because <laughs> uh, it's just, it's blistering and um, super fast. The other thing that I find super fascinating about this record is it it feels of a piece it flows in a very specific way uh, like for example the the first song that was issued was uh the second track on the album called the gathering and it was just at the time issued as a standalone sing single uh sometime in uh, 2021 and i was like okay that's pretty good um but when i heard it in context of the record it took on a whole new meaning and um and it was fantastic. And then there's this this stretch of three songs that have to do with fathers and fatherhood. There was a song called there's a song called Fatherless uh, that and that talks about um, you know growing up without a great father figure. There's the song follows it, which is the basically seven second song uh, called My Bad, which ends with the lyric I do not want to be my father's son. And those are followed by the song Miranda which it is about his father who has uh, transitioned to a, to a woman and how through that process they have actually been able to rebuild a relationship. Um, and it, it, his father has lost a lot of the anger and, and rage that he felt as a, I guess earlier in his life now that he's come out to, be a she and to be I, always, I hate saying things like that i don't i'm not trying to misgender people right um, right it's difficult in this specific scenario because the way the song is written too kind of throws you for like a wait what are we how are we supposed what <laughs> there's like a narrative to the song that kind of throws yeah. the the <laughs> the conversation they're off yeah one of one of my favorite parts there's um there's a lyric that says it was never about who she was, just the way that he behaved. Yeah. And yeah. the use of the pronouns there was very specific. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
and I love that. And then the the standard version of the album ends with a song about London. And I'm, thanks to streaming, I'm terrible with song titles now. Yeah. So I'm going to have to – one moment, please, while I look this up. Um, there we go. Ah, Farewell to My City, which is about – leaving London um, where he lived for many, many years. And that hit me because there's been talk of our family moving out of Oklahoma at some point in the next few years. And I've been here since 1992. So that hit me kind of in a personal way, but then the, so the extra songs on there, the, the proper album has 14 songs. There are 20 on the deluxe, most of which are just, acoustic versions of songs already on the album. But the two that I think finish out the story and the narrative of the whole album are uh, tracks 15 and 16, which are the Zeitbeast and the house where I was raised. And my guess is those were not left on the proper album because they wouldn't fit on the vinyl oh, is, yeah. is a guess. Yeah. Um, and it's just a guess. But The House Where I Was Raised is a lot like Farewell to My City. It's about moving on and growing up, and it's about the house he was raised in and and the stories that happened to that and saying goodbye to it and whatnot. And um, I think about that as a parent watching my kids grow up and um, also thinking about someday leaving here and even that just that moment of, you know, locking that front door one final time and pulling out of the driveway one last time. Uh, So it is, um, that one hits. Um, I've always really connected with Frank Turner's lyrics in a lot of ways because he is, uh, he got in some hot water, little air quotes hot water, um, Mm -hmm. because he referred to himself as a libertarian once. Um, But, and I actually interviewed him like in 2011 for my, my silly website. And I asked him about that and he was like, no, I'm just, he, he considers himself like a classical liberal. He's like, I'm more like the American founding fathers than philosophically than, you know, modern day libertarians. I'm like, okay, that makes perfect sense. And he has obviously evolved stances on things over the years. And there is, there are a couple songs on this album that talk about that directly. And I really, really like that. There's, it's in, I want to say, Perfect Score, which is a song about how no one is, no one's perfect. And, you know, it's about people sounding off online and about how he has grown up and realized how many things he said when he was young were, were just stupid and wrong. Um, so that one, that one really, uh, God, my voice is dying. That one really um, <laughs> sits with me. There's also the song The Resurrectionists does a callback to the song I Knew Proof Rock. It was from Love Iron Song, the first song on that album. Uh, yeah, I knew Proof Rock before he was famous is the the name of it. And there's a bit in that song where he, he mentions some of his specific friends. And this one kind of does an update, updates you on their status. And uh, I love that. I love lyrical callbacks in music. Yeah. I also love when like certain refrains or certain phrases get reused um, Dave Haas does that a lot. He did that a lot with in loved ones and he's done that in his solo career and stuff has, has gone from one project to another project. So, um, so yeah, that's, I, I think I've put p- pontific. What's the word when you preach about something pontificated? Thank you yeah. <laughs> about this long enough. Um, what are your thoughts on this record? Um, there in early on in our, our, friendship you you would tell me like oh yeah this frank turner record is really good this one's really good and just my knowledge of his his library was very limited like all i knew was the like the very first ep like that was like the only thing i really knew and so when this one came out i was like okay i'm gonna give this one like an earnest you know full attention listen this is gonna be like the first one in real time coming out that i was like really you know aware of off the bat and so i listened to it and i was like Wait, is all his stuff like this? Because uh, I was, I very much enjoyed this record. It was a lot of fun, and I've come to understand that's also probably the most punk, quote unquote, record that he's put out, musicianically, I guess is how you would describe it. Um, but it it has a, I don't know if this 
is it intentionally what he was going for, but there is almost a concept album feel to this album, to this record. I don't know if that comes across in all of his records like that, or if it's just because they're so, he's such a personal songwriter that maybe it just feels like that. He, he actually mentioned something like that in, in an interview I was watching that he doesn't do that on purpose except for the the album that was a bunch of songs about women in history mm. who he thought were overlooked. So that one was very much a purposeful concept album. Yeah. But often he will, as he's you know writing songs and recording them, he realizes, oh, there's here's kind of the theme of this batch of songs. Yeah. And I can't remember what the, he said the theme was, but no, that's you're not wrong. That you can hear that sometimes on his records. Not all of them, but. I guess being maybe a very autobiographical songwriter that maybe it just gives the feeling of a concept record maybe, but the concept record is his life (laughs) and his experiences, which is almost everyone. But he has this very, I feel like a storytellerish approach to his lyrics. Like, yeah, there's some good lyrical imagery in there, but he's also a fairly straightforward lyricist where it's like it's not that hard to like figure out what he's going for and meaning there's not really much confusion whenever you're listening to his lyrics yeah the other thing i really like about his music in general is it's pretty uplifting Mm -hmm. um like you can you can at least i can i can see myself in a lot of what he sings about um but also it it's the kind of music that kind of gives you hope even when he's really mad about something um yeah, so I saw him in right around the time, maybe a month or so after. I think it was in June. I can't remember. Who cares? Um, but he played Oklahoma City. They they did a tour of the United States where in 50 days he was going to play all 50 states. Mm-hmm. Um, and in some cases he did two shows a day, which is which is box. So basically he would do like an in show somewhere or a, a solo acoustic show, and then like in the afternoon and then in the evening. And the next state over would play a full band show. Uh, but in Oklahoma City, they played a full band show. And uh, my kids went with me and we had an incredible time. He is such a phenomenal performer and, uh, and front man. He's one of those artists that you're watching perform live and you're like, why isn't this guy huge? Yeah. Why, why isn't this? Why are we playing in a, you know. A, a small, well, medium sized theater type place that can hold, you know, a couple thousand people, like a, a House of Blues size venue, um, instead of like a basketball arena. Is he, is it a matter of just like in America, he's not as big as he is in England? Like, is he playing bigger places in England? I, he has played Wembley once yeah. in England. Um, I know he does in Europe. He has. There's a festival that's like a four day event that he puts on um, with him and a bunch of other bands that always come out that always sells out. So, yeah, I think in Europe and in England specifically, he he's he's a lot bigger. I mean, he he performed at the opening ceremonies of the uh, 2012 Olympics uh, right. when they were in London um, and here he's just a you know, he's I would say it's still cult status. Yeah. Um, I mean, he was big enough. His major label debut, which came out 10 years ago, um, did get him some some sh- performances on late night talk shows and whatnot. And occasionally I'll hear that song like in a store, one hmm. of the bigger songs from that from that record, um, which that was called uh, Tape Deck Heart. Another record that was vastly, imp- well, not vastly, but was very much improved by by the the extended tracks the bonus tracks on there um i i just yeah uh, i love bonus tracks uh, just, <laughs> that is, that is a thing so uh so yeah i i've seen turner four times um every time has been incredible if you get the chance to see frank turner even if you're not like super aware of his catalog you will have a good time he's that good of a performer like my kids know some of his songs because I've just played the bejesus out of them in the car. Uh, but they both had a really good time. In fact, my daughter Skylar said on the way home, she was like, yeah, I knew four songs. Yeah. But she was smiling the whole time. We just, it was great. It was just a lot of fun. Um, I do 
This was okay. So one other fun fact about FTHC, this was Frank Turner's first number one album in England, and it was primarily from physical record sales. So I thought See, to that me was that cool. already shows that he's much bigger over there than he is here. Yeah, yeah. I I don't quite understand how Billboard charts are counted. It it just it. And maybe that also answers the question of back to a vulture wake. Why put out two EPs instead of just one record? Cause you get to spread it out yeah. longer with the streaming and the algorithms and whatever the hell. Um, cause that shit don't make no sense. <laughs> uh, but it's, yeah, he, he definitely much bigger in, in Europe. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Uh, you've been on the show a couple times this year. Do we do, we did pretty in pink this year. We did. That was really fun. Were and you on we another the bracketology of yeah the, the the Ramones core which we got some uh, some flack about shocker we, al- we always get those for the bracket episodes so I don't know it's well, brackets are hard because <laughs> one you're doing direct comparisons of stuff mm-hmm. and then two sometimes it's not always super easy to narrow down the parameters of what you're allowing in and what you're not yeah. And I did notice on on a number of the comments, I'm like, okay, you guys obviously didn't listen at all Mm -hmm. and just looked at the graphic. (laughs) Welcome, blah, 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 wasn't on there. It's like, well, Well, we explained it. First five (laughs) minutes of the conversation. Yeah. Just told you why. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I always always have a great time coming on the show. I I really enjoy I've really enjoyed the um, A to Z thing you're doing on the Patreon which, folks, if you're not signed up for the Punk Lotto Pod Patreon, you really should. It's only a dollar a month. You get <laughs> weekly bonus audio. Right now you're getting daily bonus audio. It's really good stuff. And occasionally you get to see Justin try out new beverages. Yes, I just posted that last night because I talked about it. And I was like, I should post that before it's not Christmas anymore. <laughs> I, re- <laughs> I recorded that in November. I just had y- yet to uh, <laughs> to post it. Nice. Um, it's, uh, it's really good stuff. Well, thank you, Dave. Thanks for the yeah. plug there. Uh, well, let's plug your show, One Band, Five Songs. I got it right that time. Yeah, you uh, did. You you took a brief hiatus, but you are now back and releasing pretty regularly. Yeah, I, I I didn't realize how long of a hiatus it was. I guess my last episode was in sometime in September. Mm. And then I they started dropping in December. It was like December 4th or 5th. So I took all that time off mostly so I could concentrate on school. Um, and there was a day... At some point in November, when I sat down and I knocked out like four episodes, <laughs> uh, I haven't recorded anything since then. So my backlog is starting to mm-hmm. empty out. Um, my plan was over the uh, this long weekend, which I already had planned before I got COVID. Now it's an extra whole week off. Uh, yeah, I had planned to record stuff. But after this conversation, I'm thinking maybe not. Uh, but I <laughs> Yeah, it um, it's it was fun going back to it, and uh, I did start doing this little thing that no one is ever going to notice except me. But I've I've decided to every other episode do a more well known artist, and my my cutoff is if you have a million monthly streams on Spotify. So if you have over a million or more, um, that that's that's what I'm calling the more well known, more mainstreamy type artists. So. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, when when uh, the show came back, the first episode I did, uh, which was me basically burying no effects for <laughs> a while, and then I followed that up with an episode on Two Cow Garage, uh, who is phenomenal. And then this week's episode, at least of the time of this recording, was uh, the Flaming Lips from Oklahoma, who I also uh, kind of bury, um, <laughs> because. Wayne is a questionable guy, lead singer. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, so yeah, it, well, it's get... uh, sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say it's 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 my goofy little bit of fun. Well, you can get that in the show notes here too as well. I have a link to it as well. It's on Spotify only right now uh, due to the limitations of the uh, what did they call it? Record and play or speak and play or whatever. Uh, music and talk. Yeah. Speak and play. Is it like speak a toy and... thing? <laughs> Uh, like a play school uh, oh, thing. Oh God, yeah, it was. Um, you could tell, right? Speaking, yeah, something like that. Um, <laughs> Jesus, now I'm gonna have to look that up. Um, I can't <laughs> remember. Can say something, yeah. something like that. Someone's 
maybe someone somewhere will tell us. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And I'm sure we'll have you back on the show in the, in the coming year. We don't, we don't owe you a Patreon episode, do we? No, I'm all I'm all caught up. OK, OK, we owe oh, we owe Jason one. So Jason, you're getting one soon. Uh, excellent. But, um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you on some more of the bonus audio.